Okay, so the stars really have aligned for me and consequently for you, my grateful viewers, in making today's video because uh, I was working on a video about Andrew Schultz. You remember Andrew Schultz? I made a video about him, but um, he's really a hard sell. You're not biting when I make videos about Andrew Schultz. 15,000 views on the last video I made about him. That's not enough. Chicken feed! Should be 150,000. But anyway, as I was making my video about Andrew Schultz, a click came up on my YouTube feed of him talking about Russell Brand, which linked very conveniently back to my previous video. And then the icing on the cake. Russell Brand has a history with Meghan Markle. <gasps> Amazing. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, I'm going to link all of that together, put it all together for you guys in one seamless, highly coherent video. Now, I have to start my video by talking about Andrew Schultz so that you understand how terrible he is. Because I know that all you New Yorkers that are watching me, the thousands of New Yorkers that are watching me, you cannot move for New Yorkers on this channel. You all think Andrew Schultz is the best thing since sliced bread. Remember when sliced bread came out? You all lost your minds. I can't believe it. It comes in the bag. It's already sliced up for you. It blew my mind. I don't gotta do no slicing at home no more. You just open up the bag, bada boom, bada bing, you got your sandwich. That's what you think about Andrew Schultz, isn't it? He slices up the comedy for you in a convenient little bag. Yeah, a bag of shit! Sug on his dick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot. I hate you. Ha! <laughs> You're fucking ha! gay. You're so now, obviously, I don't hate Andrew Schultz. You know, I don't wish him any harm. But I just can't stand these comedians sitting around with their podcasts, talking for three hours, and they think that everything they say is really deep and spiritual and meaningful. You're supposed to be comedians. Make me laugh. Dance, clown! And Andrew Schultz is one of the worst of this type of offender. He thinks he's got all this deep insight into building a brand and... The human psyche, the way people interact with the world. He's constantly blowing his own mind and surprising himself mid-sentence with these revelations. He thinks he's fucking Moses. In reality, everything he's saying, unless you're a total idiot, is stuff that occurred to you when you were 14 years of age and never even felt the need to say because it's so bleeding obvious. Anyway, it was great to see Shane Gillis, a more grounded comedian, come on Andrew Schultz's podcast and call him out on all of this shite. Shit gotta be for black people for them to get angsty. This is a new thing. This is like an equality thing. Mm. Y'all just got the ability to, to have angst. Mm. Your baseline needs are finally getting met. So just for context there, Akash is saying how uh, black people probably don't have as much anxiety as white people because they're just getting their basic needs met now. They're coming out of poverty and whatever and uh, they're starting to discover, you know, the sort of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs kind of thing. That is not a new concept. Comedians have been saying that. Black comedians have been saying that for decades. That's like Chris Rock rock from the 90s. Surely I'm not the only person who's heard black comedians on multiple occasions talk about why black people don't go skiing and trekking and stuff like that. Man, that's white people shit. I don't remember who said that exactly, but imagine a black comedian saying something like that. Maybe it'd jog your memory if I put some kind of filter over my... Oh no. The point is, I think lots of black comedians have said stuff like that over the years. I'm sure of it. It's not new. And Andrew Schultz is sitting there like, mmm, mmm, idiot, basic bitch. And you're like, well, I'm still not happy. Why people been on that, bro? Yeah. I'm not, and I know you're going to think I'm joking, but a shiver went down my spine as Akash said, why people been on that, bro? I can't deal with people who talk like that. Where did you learn to speak? Do your parents speak like that? How old is that, Cash? These people are in their late thirties, and they're saying, "Bruh, bruh, fuck." Yeah, I have then everything I need, you, and I'm not what, happy as angst feel. feel. Whoa, Andrew Schultz, a forty-year-old man from New York, has just literally said, "You got everything you need, yet you're not happy." Angst. Wow. There are only two options here. Retardation or deceit. He's lying. He can't. He doesn't actually think the things that are coming out of his mouth 
or he's completely mentally subnormal. I love Schultz and Piffany. What are you talking about? Schultz and Piffany's are my favorite. <laughs> Yo. He repeats a statement and he's like, That's crazy, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's Let these retarded moments by Andrew Schultz forever be known as Schultz epiphanies. I love that. Thank you, Shane Gillis. Now, in the same program, just 10 minutes later, he has one of the biggest Schultz epiphanies I've ever seen. This was insane. So it's like we yeah, shit all over tiny. alcohol, but it is the perfect drug. Yeah, but they burn out. That's like a harsh... If you're doing a ton of coke, that's a harsh burnout. I mean, no, we're talking about like... Dude, you, we, you can... So you rocket coke. fuel, that's hitting the NOS and fucking... Yeah, but finance bros, you think the ones at the top top don't fuck with the... Not the top Probably top. not as much. So Shane Gillis is explaining to these idiots uh, how, uh, no, probably those top uh, finance bros, the really successful businessmen with the shark mentality, they're, they're probably not doing blow all the time. You know, they're, they're probably keeping that under control because they'll burn out pretty fast. And they're, they're all confused. They're like, what? You don't think they're all doing drugs all the time? Shane Gillis is the only adult in the room. On the way, well, up, I think maybe. they're probably doing a like Adderall and just amphetamine. Some type of upper, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So just they're Yo, also doing drugs. They're yeah. doing no, no, they're yeah, doing yeah, drugs. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. It, this is gonna sound weird, but like I think drugs are almost like a necessary component to dealing with life in the way we have to live it. I, this is gonna sound weird, but like I think drugs are almost like a necessary component to dealing with life in the way we have to live it. Hold on, I, I mean, I, just uh, give me a, bear with me, right? But I think sometimes people have a drink after work to kind of relax and like calm their nerves after a long day of work. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you need to do drugs if you're fucking in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yo. You, if you're in Alaska, oh my God. you need drugs. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. Like if you're like a canner in Alaska, you probably Bro. don't need heroin. I hope you <laughs> So he's going to get called out on that every time now. Schultz epiphany, right? Uh, which is fantastic. To be fair to him, good sport. He's laughing at himself. But uh, I... Yesterday, somebody said I've become patronizing in my videos. Somebody had the gall to question me on Twitter. And uh, I can have a laugh at myself. But patronizing? <sighs> no. Uh, and I would name and shame this person, but I couldn't because they're an anonymous troll demon. Right? Not using their real face. So, can we take those people seriously? We cannot. Okay, let's quickly take a look at what Andrew Schultz and his buddies had to say about uh, the Russell Brand incident. You know, they did talk a little bit about uh, the uh, whether the accusations are true or false and how, yeah, it's the journalist ringing up the girls, looking for dirt on him and stuff like that, which is all right, but then they immediately switch gears. That's not what they're really interested in. These people are finance bros. What they're really interested in is how Russell Brand, how the Russell Brand brand can be rebuilt and remarketed to new audiences. But unfortunately, this also does create room for skepticism. When the journalist is tracking down the girls and going, hey, didn't he do something to you? These other girls said he did it. Mm -hmm. Hey, didn't he do something? Hey, didn't he do something? And all of a sudden you're trying, you, you have a specific motive here. The journalist, it appears, doesn't want to find out that he's innocent. Yeah, I believe we have another Schultz epiphany. Anyway, then they swiftly move on to what their real main concern is on the Andrew Schultz podcast. Again, you don't know, and there is that wiggle room right there. So this is this is it's tricky, man. It's really fucking tricky. Do you think his audience will care, assuming that the charges go through and he's not convicted in a court of law because they're not able to prove it hypothetically? I think it, it stops him from doing anything in, like, the industry mm -hmm. for a long time unless he is uh, exonerated. I think he's he kind of given up on the industry, though. Yeah, he has. He has. It, it might make things tricky, like having a big-time promoter for his tour mm. or putting out a special on a, on a Netflix or an Amazon or something like that. It might make those things tricky. But he can continue to exist 
I think, online and build his following. I'm actually going to answer that question for you uh, here. Uh, I hope you don't feel patronised, all right? Um, as that person said on Twitter yesterday. Uh, another person also said, uh, my eyes were too far apart from one another yesterday, which I was uh, very displeased with. This, you know, People saying I look like the characters from Avatar. Uh, that's not okay. I would press charges if they weren't all anonymous troll demons who don't, you know, won't use their real name like me. I'm here and I'm ready to face you. My eyes are wide open, all right? Like an owl. Um, anyway, the point is, can Russell Brand continue his career? Doesn't matter if he's guilty or not guilty. It really doesn't matter. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. Everyone either believes him or doesn't believe him, whether, if, whatever the outcome of anything that happens, of any new evidence that comes to light. If you like Russell Brand, the text message is the evidence, it's all doctored, it's all a coordinated attack. If you dislike him, yeah, he's always been a creep. I knew he'd done that. <laughs> I knew he was guilty. Uh, it, it just We're living in a post-truth age. Mm? Do you understand what that means, people? Huh? I hope you don't feel patronised. <sighs> anyway, um, should we get into the Meghan Markle stuff? Yeah. Russell Brand and Meghan Markle, eh? <laughs> what a time to be alive. She was in a film that I was in. I'd done yeah. a film, Game to the Greek, it was called. Bloody good film. Oh, it good film. <laughs> Meghan Markle didn't know at the time because she weren't married to a royal person, so I weren't paying attention. Well, I think in it, I don't remember the film that much because, you know, I, I, you're still out of it then. Still out of it. <laughs> and I, I think I planted one on her. I think in the like, Ah! Janet Street Pull. Uh, uh, she really, uh, she, uh, she scares me. Anyway, uh, is this, uh, is this Meghan Markle? Uh, an up and coming hot young thing <laughs> in 2009 she was 28 years old although i know all you crazy people think it'll be like in the uh, chat in the comments she was 57 in 2009 no no she was born in 1981 as much as you don't want to believe it okay 1981 yeah 1981 uh you know i uh, do we want to get into this very a lot. What I would say about this is it's kind of funny that she was in an uncredited role <laughs> getting kissed by Russell Brand and having to deal with that kind of person all the time because she was a nobody in 2009. In 2016, you know, she really climbed that social ladder in five, six years, didn't she? It's amazing. She did a great job. It's a, it's a real story of rags to riches. Well, upper middle class to royalty. It's like the story of Cinderella in many ways, uh, which used to be called Cinder Slut originally. <laughs> uh, if you've enjoyed today's video, remember to tell the algorithm via clicking on the like buttons and, uh, and commenting and sharing this everywhere. Share it! Share it with all your family and friends! Get me to where I want to be. Uh, I want to really Build my brand, you know, like Andrew Schultz is doing. Um, find out if that is Megan, by the way, because it looks like her a bit. I don't know, you know. Is there a clip? Do we know? Can we take Russell Brand's battered words on it? For it? I don't know. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs>